The saddest aspect of life right now is that science gathers knowledge faster than society gathers wisdom. Never let your sense of morals prevent you from doing what is right. In life, unlike chess, the game continues after checkmate. Anti-intellectualism has been a constant thread winding its way through our political and cultural life, nurtured by the false notion that democracy means that my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. Your assumptions are your windows on the world. Scrub them off every once in a while, or the light won't come in. If my doctor told me I had only six minutes to live, I wouldn't brood. I'd type faster. There is a cult of ignorance in the United States, and there has always been. Life is pleasant. Death is peaceful. It's the transition that's troublesome. Any planet is Earth to those that live on it. The most exciting phrase to hear in science, the one that heralds the most discoveries, is not Eureka. I found it, but that's funny. Violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. Self-education is, I firmly believe, the only kind of education there is. Properly read, the Bible is the most potent force for atheism ever conceived. I write for the same reason I breathe, because if I didn't, I would die. Those people who think they know everything are a great annoyance to those of us who do. I am an atheist, out and out. It took me a long time to say it. I've been an atheist for years and years, but somehow I felt it was intellectually unrespectable to say one was an atheist because it assumed knowledge that one didn't have. Somehow it was better to say that one was a humanist or an agnostic. I finally decided that I am a creature of emotion as well as of reason. Emotionally, I'm an atheist. I don't have the evidence to prove that God doesn't exist, but I so strongly suspect that he doesn't that I don't want to waste my time. Tell me why the stars do shine. Tell me why the ivy twines. Tell me what makes the skies so blue, and I'll tell you why I love you. Nuclear fusion makes stars to shine. Tropisms make the ivy twine. Raleigh scattering makes skies so blue. Testicular hormones are why I love you. If knowledge can create problems, it is not through ignorance that we can solve them. It is the obvious, which is so difficult to see most of the time. People say it's as plain as the nose on your face, but how much of the nose on your face can you see? 
unless someone holds up a mirror to you. Imagine the people who believe such things and who are not ashamed to ignore, totally, all the patient findings of thinking minds through all the centuries since the Bible was written. And it is these ignorant people, the most uneducated, the most unimaginative, the most unthinking among us, who would make themselves the guides and leaders of us all, who would force their feeble and childish beliefs on us, who would invade our schools and libraries and homes. I personally resent it bitterly. A number of years ago, when I was a freshly appointed instructor, I met for the first time a certain eminent historian of science. At the time, I could only regard him with tolerant condescension. I was sorry for the man who, it seemed to me, was forced to hover about the edges of science. He was compelled to shiver endlessly in the outskirts getting only feeble warmth from the distant sun of science in progress, while I, just beginning my research, was bathed in the heady liquid heat up at the very center of the glow. In a lifetime of being wrong at many a point, I was never more wrong. It was I, not he, who was wandering in the periphery. It was he, not I, who lived in the blaze. I had fallen victim to the fallacy of the growing edge, the belief that only the very frontier of scientific advance counted, that everything that had been left behind by that advance was faded and dead. But is that true? Because a tree in spring buds and comes greenly into leaf, are those leaves therefore the tree? If the newborn twigs and their leaves were all that existed, they would form a vague halo of green suspended in midair. But surely that is not the tree. The leaves, by themselves, are no more than trivial fluttering decoration. It is the trunk and limbs that give the tree its grandeur, and the leaves themselves their meaning. There is not a discovery in science, however revolutionary, however sparkling with insight, that does not arise out of what went before. Creationists make it sound as though a theory is something you dreamt up after being drunk all night. Intelligence is an accident of evolution and not necessarily an advantage. To surrender to ignorance and call it God has always been premature and it remains premature today. You must keep sending work out. You must never let a manuscript do nothing but eat its head off in a drawer. You send that work out again and again while you're working on another one. If you have talent, you will receive some measure of success, but only if you persist. I received the fundamentals of my education in school, but that was not enough. My real education, the superstructure, the details, the true architecture, I got out of the public library. For an impoverished child whose family could not afford to buy books, the library was open door to wonder and achievement. And I could never be sufficiently grateful that I had the wit to charge through that door and make the most of it. Now, when I read constantly about the way in which library funds are being cut and cut, I can only think that the door is closing and that American society has found one more way 
to destroy itself. They won't listen. Do you know why? Because they have certain fixed notions about the past. Any change would be blasphemy in their eyes, even if it were the truth. They don't want the truth. They want their traditions. I am not a speed reader. I am a speed understander. People think of education as something they can finish. Jokes of the proper kind, properly told, can do more to enlighten questions of politics, philosophy, and literature than any number of dull arguments. I believe in evidence. I believe in observation, measurement, and reasoning confirmed by independent observers. I believe anything, no matter how wild and ridiculous, if there is evidence for it. The wilder and more ridiculous something is, however, the firmer and more solid the evidence would have to be. The earth should not be cut up into hundreds of different sections, each inhabited by a self-defined segment of humanity that considers its own welfare and its own national security to be paramount above all other consideration. I am all for cultural diversity and would be willing to see each recognizable group value its cultural heritage. I am a New York patriot, for instance. And if I lived in Los Angeles, I would love to get together with other New York expatriates and sing, give my regards to Broadway. This sort of thing, however, should remain cultural and benign. I'm against it if it means that each group despises others and lusts to wipe them out. I'm against arming each little self-defined group with weapons with which to enforce its own prides and prejudices. The Earth faces environmental problems right now that threaten the imminent destruction of civilization and the end of the planet as a livable world. Humanity cannot afford to waste its financial and emotional resources on endless, meaningless quarrels between each group and all others. There must be a sense of globalism in which the world unites to solve the real problems that face all groups alike. There are no nations. There is only humanity. And if we don't come to understand that right soon, there will be no nations because there will be no humanity. Isn't it sad that you can tell people that the ozone layer is being depleted, the forests are being cut down, the deserts are advancing steadily, that the greenhouse effect will raise sea level 200 feet, that overpopulation is choking us, that pollution is killing us, that nuclear war may destroy us, and they yawn and settle back for a comfortable nap, but tell them that the Martians are landing and they scream and run. I am frequently asked if I have visited Israel, whereas yet it is simply assumed that I have. Well, I don't travel, I really don't. And if I did, I probably wouldn't visit Israel. I remember how it was in 1948 when Israel was being established and all my Jewish friends were ecstatic. I was not. I said, what are we doing? We are establishing ourselves in a ghetto in a small corner of a vast Muslim sea. The Muslims will never forget nor forgive and Israel, as long as it exists, will be embattled. I was laughed at, but I was right. 
I can't help but feel that the Jews didn't really have the right to appropriate a territory only because 2,000 years ago, people they considered their ancestors were living there. History moves on, and you can't really turn it back. The easiest way to solve a problem is to pretend that it doesn't exist. Suppose that we are wise enough to learn and know, and yet not wise enough to control our learning and knowledge, so that we use it to destroy ourselves. Even if that is so, knowledge remains better than ignorance. It is better to know, even if the knowledge endures only for the moment that comes before destruction, than to gain eternal life at the price of a dull, and swinish lack of comprehension of a universe that swirls unseen before us in all its wonder. That was the choice of Achilles, and it is mine, too. <laughs>